Today I want to talk about programming languages. More specifically, I will start with discussing which languages we should consider for this video, followed by grouping the languages by use case, and conclude the video by answering the question what language should you learn? If you find what I discuss interesting, insightful, or useful, then please consider subscribing. Alright, now that you know what I will be talking about, I would like to motivate this video and make a couple statements that probably do not fit anywhere else in this video. Let's begin with this. I have been asked the following question about four or five times in the past month alone. Hey Arsene, you seem like you know what you're talking about. What language should I learn? First, the fact that people think I know what I'm talking about is actually pretty terrifying. And second, boy is this always one hell of a loaded question riddled with hidden assumptions. So this video will attempt to address the mountains of nuance and asterisks that come with answering a question as hard as this. After all, no such thing as an easy answer to a hard question. Anyways, with the preamble out of the way, let's start this video by choosing the languages to discuss. Let me start by stating the obvious. There are so many languages that I could probably make a solid 10 minute video of me just enumerating them. So in order for this video to be reasonable in length, I need to limit my discussion only to some subset of languages out there. I know that no matter how I pick the languages, I will make someone upset for leaving out their love child, so let me preemptively apologize to all the Churro developers out there for leaving your favorite language out of this list. Alright, saying that I will limit the list of languages I want to discuss is easy, but how do you actually decide which programming languages to leave in? That's a hard call to make, so I'll use a mix of analyzing online sources and my personal judgment to decide what languages will be included in this video. The online sources I decided to look at are the 2020 Stack Overflow Developer Survey, the TOB Index for May 2021, and PYPL for May 2021. Why did I pick these? Well, because the TOB Index is one of the first things people will find, the PYPL methodology of collecting data seems very sound, and the Stack Overflow Developer Survey is a solid resource to get a glimpse into developers' preferences. Let's begin our list of programming languages to consider by first dumping the five programming languages that everyone and their grandmother has heard of. Java, Python, JavaScript and TypeScript, C and C++, and C Sharp. As you can very clearly see, I've already done something highly controversial with some of the entries in this list. I'll mark the controversial entries with asterisks, just to acknowledge that what I'm saying is controversial and move on. Please bear with me, I have a point to all of this that I will get to eventually. With the easy ones out of the way, deciding what languages to add to my list starts to become rather difficult. Looking at the fact that PHP is within the top 10 of all the sources I'm looking at, I will add PHP to my list of languages. Next, I do feel that Go is worth mentioning, as it is a reasonably popular language according to the sources I'm using, and because it actually leads down an interesting path during discussion in the next parts of this video. I think that next, I will add Swift into the mix, as it is basically the main way to develop macOS and iOS native apps as dictated by Apple at the moment, and it is also quite popular according to all the sources I'm looking at. Now, this one may be controversial again, but R is actually quite high up on all the popularity lists, and it will again provide something interesting to talk about later on. Last, but not least in any way, is Rust, the most loved language according to the Stack Overflow developer survey. You might ask me this question at this point, why would I go with only the most popular languages? Am I not missing all the good languages that are not popular? Well, the answer to this question is quite simple to me. The more popular the language, the more likely it is that you will find useful documentation and resources that will help you with learning the language as you go along. Also, the more popular the language, the more likely it is that you will be able to get hired for a job that uses that language. All right, now that we have a list of languages to use as examples, we need to come up with some use cases for all the different languages. So let's get right to that. Programming is a wonderful thing because you can create virtually whatever you want, however you want. So in order to have some way to actually direct and organize the discussion of what language you should consider learning, we need to outline the different use cases and say what languages are good for what use case. In case you did not know this, not every language is particularly well suited for every task, as trying to do something like making a graphics engine with PHP is going to go about as well as putting a square peg in a round hole. So with that out of the way, the use cases that I will discuss in a bit more detail are front-end web development, back-end web development, video game development, DevOps and SRE, data science, machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, 
mobile development, embedded systems development, and lastly, distributed and enterprise systems development. This is quite obviously not a comprehensive list, but this does encompass most of the more popular use cases that make sense. Armed with this knowledge, we can start sorting languages by all the use cases, so let's begin with the first. For front-end web development, really, the only general purpose language that to be used is JavaScript and TypeScript. It is quite obvious that HTML and CSS need to be mentioned here as honorable mentions, as without those, none of your JavaScript or TypeScript will be particularly useful, but still. One thing to keep in mind is that there is an enormous number of different frameworks around, like React, Angular, Vue, D3, and many, many more. While we're talking about web-related stuff, let's talk about the world of backend development. For backend web development, you suddenly get a lot more choice of languages. There is JavaScript and TypeScript, Python, PHP, C Sharp, Go, and Java. Each language has its strengths and weaknesses, but pretty much all of these are used in industry with varying levels of popularity. As an example, the Node.js framework is a very popular way to implement web backends when using JavaScript or TypeScript. For PHP, there exist things like Laravel, Symfony, YII, and many others. For Python, there exist frameworks like Django and Flask. C Sharp is particularly popular because of the ASP.NET Core framework. I could sit here and list all of them for the rest of eternity, but I'd rather not, so let's talk about video game development. In this use case, C Sharp and C and C++ are dominant. Most hobbyists making video games tend to do something in Unity, and C Sharp is the language used for adding in more complicated logic to Unity games. As for C and C++, it is used because it is super lightweight and performant, and most large-scale game engines are written in C and C++. Large companies like EA use C++ for their engines, just look at the Frostbite engine, or otherwise look at the Unreal engine if you don't like EA. However, Python is also used a little bit, especially by beginners because of some really convenient frameworks such as Pygame. Let's move away from the traditional software development for a second to look at DevOps and SRE. Most DevOps professionals will use Python or Go as the primary language for most of their work. This is because both Python and Go are super convenient if you work with Kubernetes, managing CI and CD pipelines, or writing automation and monitoring tools. There is also an honorable mention that I would like to make, and that mention is Bash. But that is a bit of an aside. While we're actually a bit away from typical CS-related jobs, I think it makes sense to talk about data science. Data science is actually an interesting case, where most people actually come from a discipline where programming isn't exactly taught all the time. But that does not mean that data scientists do not use programming languages. They typically use languages like R and Python. R is a rather feature-rich language to begin with. In Python, with the use of libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, get right up to parity with R. Also, let me make a quick point. Data science is not machine learning. Machine learning is actually just a tool in the toolbox of any competent data scientist. While we're on the topic of machine learning, let's talk about machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence. Hands down, the most popular and widely used language for ML and AI research is Python. There are wonderful libraries like scikit-learn, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and others, and the integration with Python is awesome. However, let me address the elephant in the room. What languages are used to implement things like Keras, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and others? Well, it's actually C and C++. In other words, depending on what level of abstraction you are involved with in ML and AI, you might deal with either the simplicity of Python or the super high performance of C and C++. But there aren't that many people that are actually in this field, while there are a lot of people in mobile development. In the mobile development part of the world, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, and Swift trade blows. Java is typically used for the Android platform, Swift for iOS and iPadOS, and JavaScript gets its own mention because of the React Native framework that lets you develop cross-platform apps using a single language. An honorable mention goes out to Kotlin, which is trying to be a replacement for Java, but it's not super widely used quite yet. Since we're on the topic of small devices, let's go smaller with embedded systems development. The world of embedded systems is very varied. From IoT devices to simple Arduinos to robotics, it's a really cool part of the software development world. In this space, languages like C and C++ are incredibly common due to how low level they are. However, Rust is slowly starting to gain footing in this area, and it will be interesting to see Rust's development across the embedded systems world. 
Python is also used in embedded systems despite not being a compiled language. But that's enough of that. Let's talk about distributed and enterprise systems development. I know that I'm bundling two rather different industries into one here, but I do have a point. Typically, enterprise systems need to run on many servers or in the cloud and quite often follow a microservices based architecture. Typical languages for this use case are C and C++, Java with a Spring Boot framework, Go, Python, C Sharp, and even a bit of Rust in some cases. I wish I could talk about the different frameworks in a bit more detail, but quite often the frameworks are closed source and custom made for each enterprise. And with that, I'm concluding the discussion of the different use cases. It may be quite obvious to people that I've missed a lot of use cases, but I never intended to make this a comprehensive list. If you feel that I missed something rather important though, or would like to mention some other interesting use cases, then feel free to tell me what the use cases are and what languages and frameworks are commonly used for them in the comments below. So with that out of the way, let's quickly talk about what languages you should try and learn. A couple things that need to be mentioned before I can actually tell you what language you should learn. First, what I will say is my own personal opinion. I neither know your personal circumstances, nor do I claim to be the total expert in providing this sort of advice. Second, the topic of programming languages is actually weirdly sensitive. The paper from 1992 titled The Case Against C put it really nicely. The choice of a programming language is often an emotional issue which is not subject to rational discussion. In other words, language preference is a subjective thing, so you should treat my suggestions as a starting point and try other languages on your own. The list of use cases and languages for each use case should be a good starting point for that. Anyways, let's get right into this. The reason that the answer to this question took over 2000 words already is because the question is nuanced itself. Are you trying to learn a skill that complements what you do already? Are you only trying to get a job without a worry of what job it is exactly? Are you looking for a fun language to learn? Are you looking to automate things in your life for fun? Are you looking to make some fun mobile apps? Are you looking at making video games? Are you trying to get ahead of the curve during the summer between high school and first year of uni in CS? Are you trying to just learn coding because you want to feed your curiosity about how computers work? Well, the answer is actually fairly different for each question, so let's go through them in order. For the first question, I cannot give a precise answer since I don't know what you already do. Hence, I will give the answer that is extremely broad. You should probably learn Python. This is because it has so many packages and libraries that make it applicable in almost any environment. As you can see from the list I made, Python is applicable in almost every single use case I thought of. Let's move on. If all you want is a job and do not care what job it is, then I would actually say that you should learn JavaScript and maybe TypeScript as well. This is because web development is the most common software job out there. After all, everyone needs a website and you can make a full web service end to end in just JavaScript with frameworks like Node.js, React.js, Angular.js, Vue.js, and more. This advice is applicable to the industry as a whole, but I would actually suggest looking at what is in demand where you live if you are unable to relocate. I know that there are a lot of regions where PHP still reigns supreme, and some areas where C Sharp with the ASP.NET framework is king. All right, let's keep going. If you're looking for a fun language, then I would actually say that you should consider trying either Go or Rust. Both are new languages with varied uses, and both are loved by hobbyists and professionals alike. If you're looking for a way to automate things, I would say that there are two ways that you can go. If you're looking at doing home automation, then I would suggest learning C or C++ because of their compatibility with Arduinos and other microcontrollers. If home automation is not the only automation you're thinking of doing, then Python is great. The expressive power of that language is awesome and you can get up and running with your automated workflows in no time flat. If you're looking to make mobile apps, then the question really comes down to what phone you have access to to prototype on. If it's an Android, then learn Java, otherwise learn Swift. Another option is actually JavaScript and TypeScript if you want to make web apps that also work on the phone because of the React Native framework. If you're looking at making video games, I would actually strongly suggest learning C-sharp and experimenting with the Unity engine. If you still feel like you want to make video games or want to do it professionally, then C++ will be a good route to go. How about upcoming university students? Well, first things first, figure out what language is being taught in the intro class at the university you will be attending and try learning that. 
If you don't know if you want to go into CS and are just here on a whim, then I would suggest trying Python. It is a super beginner friendly language that will let you explore programming in a fun and engaging way. However, if you're dead set on CS, I would either suggest going down the super applied path of JavaScript for employability or down the path of C and C++ because it'll get you to learn the fundamentals really well, even if you never use the languages again. Lastly, if you want to just learn how computers work exactly, then I would say that nothing beats plain old C. It is the only language that is still in use where you can just look at the code right in front of you and with a bit of practice, you know pretty much exactly what it will compile down to. And now, if I did not address your specific need for learning a programming language, I think that my analysis and reasoning should provide you with a good starting point to find the answer of what language you should learn yourself. Oh, and last piece of advice, don't bother just learning the language. The libraries and frameworks available for a language are what make the programming languages incredibly powerful. As long as you can keep that in mind, I think that you can make anything. Man, this turned out to be a slightly longer video than I intended, because as I kept thinking about it, more and more things seemed like they were necessary to say. I hope that I did not lose too many of you guys in the details and that this was a generally useful and insightful video for some of you. If you did find this video useful, insightful, interesting, or believe that more people should see it, then please consider liking the video and maybe even subscribing to me. Thank you for your time. Bye.